Welcome to Witness Wednesday here on the Walk Boldly with Jesus podcast. I'm your host, Katherine Duggan. However, each Wednesday, I will have a guest give their witness of how God is working in their lives. Hearing how God is working in other people's lives shows us how deeply He cares for each one of us individually. Listening to these experiences will help your faith grow. I am so blessed to be able to share these with you. Let's get started. Today's witness is one that I happened upon when I was checking out Matthew West's website. If you don't know who Matthew West is, he is a singer, songwriter, and storyteller. He has a song that is called Hello My Name Is, and it's a really good song. I used that song in my mentoring last night and wanted to learn more about it. This led me to his website, MatthewWest.com, and that led me to a website for the nonprofit that he has with his father, who's a pastor. The website for that is popwe.org, P-O-P-W-E dot org. I'll place a link for it in the show notes. Matthew and his father are encouraging people to share their stories. I clicked on a letter from a woman named Jennifer, where she is describing her long journey with her son, Robert. I'm going to read that letter to you this morning for Witness Wednesday. Here is her letter to Matthew West. Dear Matthew, I am the mother of Robert, and I wanted to write this note to explain personally what impact your music has had in my life recently. I love that you are encouraging people to share our stories. It is incredibly powerful to share how God is working in unique ways, and I find it challenging to summarize so that this letter would not be too long. But here is a short version of my attempt to share part of my story. I became a Christian at a young age and I love music, so Christian music has always spoken to my heart. A heart that was trying desperately from a young age to fill the gaping void of acceptance. Striving to keep my world safe, predictable, and manageable, I married my high school sweetheart at a very young age. Difficulty struck the hardest when I faced infertility. However, I believed God was blessing me abundantly when I got pregnant with triplets. Then, November 24, 2000 came, and my body went into labor only halfway through my pregnancy. My son Jacob was born halfway through the pregnancy, fully formed and a beating heart, but with lungs too early to survive. He lived in our hospital room for six hours. Meanwhile, we awaited the delivery of of our two other babies, as doctors said it would be impossible for them to survive. But I held on to the confident faith I believed that with God all things are possible. So we begged God, we pleaded with God to do the impossible, to miraculously spare the lives of my other two babies. And God granted the impossible. Despite all medical understanding, days after Jacob's birth, I was placed in an inpatient room. Every day I lived on the edge, unsure if they'd make it a few more weeks so maybe they could have viable lungs. Again, I pleaded with God for the impossible. And five weeks after Jacob's delivery, God chose for our other two babies to be born. They were micro preemies, but they had a chance. Robert James was born weighing one pound seven ounces and Tiffany Fay was born weighing one pound ten ounces. Their new home became the NICU. Both babies had their own challenges to survive. Tiffany had bleeding in her lung, and Robert was diagnosed with a severe brain hemorrhage that doctors said he received when his identical twin Jacob was born five weeks prior. The doctors told us to say goodbye to both our babies, as they may not survive the night and said if Robert does survive, he would be severely handicapped, unable to walk, talk, eat, drink. He would be fully relying on our care for his everyday life. Devastated, and yet fully determined to give our children every chance at life, we pressed on. Meanwhile, again, I prayed for the impossible, for God to heal our babies, and for me to have what I needed, for whatever the future would hold. 
God again had done the impossible. Our babies came home from the NICU at about three months old. Tiffany fully recovered from her lung bleed. At six months old, Robert was diagnosed with cerebral palsy, and yet God did the miraculous. Robert could eat and drink, and sure enough, as time went on, he started talking and eventually started to walk. I'm going to jump ahead to current day. A few years ago, the reality of the difficulties in my marriage started to become clearer to me. It was a hard, lonely place to accept. In the summer of 2019, I was searching for comfort when I came across your song, The God Who Stays. These were God's words to me. I will never leave you. That same year, we were faced with the reality that Robert would need one more major orthopedic surgery. Then COVID hit and made that expectation for surgery even harder as we had to stay healthy so we could get the surgery. The withdrawal into an already difficult home brought an additional level of strain and hard, but one song that kept our spirits light was Quarantine Life. Robert played it on repeat for months. It made us smile amidst the crazy going around us. Plus that summer, Walking Miracles became our theme song. This was a song for the next time of pleading with God for the impossible. We could go forward into the scary and unknown because God was reminding us that he began a good work in sparing Robert's life and that miraculous work isn't done. In September 2020, both of Robert's legs were operated on as scheduled. It was an intense surgery and one that his body would end up not responding very well and led to 12 weeks of inpatient rehab. We spent September through December of 2020 in the hospital together, and the hospital staff became our family. As I helped Robert physically and emotionally to recover, every day was difficult. Then, in November of 2020, Robert excitedly announced to me that you released a Thanksgiving song. Robert had to relearn how to walk, and every single day, We listened to that song, which literally helped him take steps. Even on Thanksgiving Day, spent in the hospital, we walked around the hospital hallway playing Gobble Gobble for all to hear and passing out cookies. Meanwhile, he'd mix in quarantine life, singing loudly as he walked at a snail's pace past other patients and staff, smiling all the while, fully expecting others to love his zest for life. And they all did. He became dubbed the mayor of Three West. After discharge in 2020, the months ahead were increasingly difficult as he had another medical issue that arose and caused severe setbacks. And then, after months of him struggling to walk, we found out in April of 2021 that his right femur wasn't healing from the surgery and that he would need a critical repair surgery for the unhealed right femur. We headed into the major revision surgery in September 2021. The second surgery led to another round of difficult recovery. He spent another eight weeks in the hospital for inpatient rehab, which meant another Thanksgiving in the hospital. Can you guess what song he played on repeat again? Yes, Gobble Gobble. We arrived home that round of therapy just two days before Christmas last year. The months after coming home at the beginning of 2022 were spent again every day driving to the hospital for therapies, and progress seemed very slow and at times almost non-existent. In April, it was confirmed that again the right femur had not healed from the surgery. This explained the pain and lack of ability he had in his leg, but it was again deeply discouraging news. However, the highlight of April 2022 is when we went to your concert at Camp Hill, Pennsylvania. You sang all of Robert's favorite songs, and he also met your dad, who was such an encouragement for him. That concert was the night before your release of the song Wonderful Life. You sang it for us that night and shared it live stream with the world. Again, God used your song to speak to the heart of life. I was personally walking through 
and reminded me of all the ways it is still a wonderful life, even amidst all the hard. It gave me renewed hope because this life ain't all there is. In May of 2022, we were told again that femur surgery was inevitable. And this surgeon at the Children's Hospital did not feel capable of handling another revision surgery. So he referred us to Yale Hospital, about four hours away from our home in Pennsylvania. Feeling so much concern as September approached and Robert would need his third surgery on his leg in just two years, your song, How Good of God, was released. It was a reminder that God is good in all of life, joys and hardships. He is still good. For the past year and a half, God has been leading me through the most heartbreaking decision within my marriage and showing me the truth of my life that has been ravished with abuse. And yet he is empowering me to use what I'm learning to become strong and to face the deep wounds so that I can find healing. Truth Be Told is a song that speaks to my healing this year, to walk through the real, raw, hard, and to be honest with myself and others of this truth. And all along, I continue to plead for God for the impossible, for restoration of my marriage, for the brokenness within our home to be used for His glory. In September 2022, the surgery at Yale was hard as we were further from home, and yet God is at work. After the surgery to put a 9-inch stainless steel nail up through Robert's femur and interlocking screws to secure it, the doctor prepared us for his body to potentially respond with much pain and discomfort. I went into this so unsure if Robert would even ever regain the ability to walk. Here's what's amazing. God did the impossible. Robert has not had pain in that right femur since the day of the surgery. He is walking with his walker and has been ever since two days after the surgery. God is doing the impossible. We are still praying for that bone to heal completely, but Robert is walking again. That in and of itself is the impossible. We have been able through this whole journey to point people to Jesus. Robert has a joy that cannot be explained by this world. He has impacted so many people during his hospital stays. From doctors to nurses, security guards, help-keeping staff, therapists, and cafeteria workers, Robert's light has shone brightly. People see a difference in him. Despite such deep hard, Jesus gives him joy. We've been given a mission field. Through all that is my story, failures and triumphs, it is a mission field. I could never have expected. My desire is to keep living out this story to bring glory to God alone. And there is where your My Story, Your Glory album has blessed me. So many of the songs are my theme. I stood on the shores of New Jersey Beach in September of this year singing What a Day. I look forward to the day I will see Jesus' face and all the sorrow will be gone. But until then... I will remember that God has done the impossible so many times, and he's not done with me yet. I continue to hold on to the truths you sing about, because we are truly living, breathing, walking miracles. May God richly bless you and the eternal work you are doing for him. It matters. It's making a difference in people's lives. So press on, brother, and know we are cheering you on to the glory of God. Your friend and sister in Christ, Jennifer. I waited patiently for the Lord to help me, and he turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on solid ground and steadied me as I walked along. He has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see what he has done and be amazed. They will put their trust in the Lord. Psalm 40 verses 1 to 3. Thank you so much, Jennifer, for sharing your story. You and your son are such an inspiration. It's not easy to turn to God in difficult times. It is not easy to decide to listen to positive music when everything is so hard. 
You and your son have been through so much and continue to give God all the glory. That is amazing. I am honored to have gotten to read your story and share it with others today. I pray for you, Robert, and your whole family. I pray God is not done working miracles in your family. I pray that God works the miracle that he worked in my marriage, in your marriage. It is possible for God to come into a marriage and completely change it. I pray you get the answers to your impossible. We have all seen God working in our lives. However, we might not all be aware it is God who is working in our lives. This is why it's so important we start talking about it more. The more we share our experiences, the more people understand how God works and how much he truly loves us. If you would be willing to share any of your experiences of how God has worked in your life, please email me at katherine at findingtruenorthcoaching.com. C-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-E at findingtruenorthcoaching.com. Or you can click on the link below. It won't take up much of your time, and your story could be just the story someone needs to hear today. Please prayerfully consider sharing your story. Everyone has one, and the world needs to hear them. I look forward to spending time with you again tomorrow. Remember, Jesus loves you, and so do I. I will have another witness for you next Wednesday. Have a blessed day. 